this video, I'm going to share with you why I quit coaching. Now, I feel like the title of this video and me saying I quit coaching sounds very dramatic and it really wasn't dramatic or anything like that. So I've been thinking about sharing why I decided to take a break from my business and why I quit coaching and making notes and just thinking about what I wanted to share for months now. And I finally feel like it's time and I'm ready to share why I decided to take a break from my business after four years of building and running my business. So here we go. So one of the things that I feel like was really important to me in building my business and creating content and showing up online was transparency. And looking back, there were three things that I shared that I remember all three times that I shared these things. I remember feeling nervous to share these things because they were vulnerable but I knew there was something within me that knew that I wanted to share these things. Even though I was nervous, I wanted to share these things because I wanted other people who were maybe in a similar position like me or start, just starting their business and hearing you know, all these success stories from other coaches and people online. I wanted them to hear my experience and things that were not as much talked about in the online space. So those three things were, for one, sharing that I, there was a period of time in my business where I went around nine months without signing a client. So when I first started my coaching business in April, 2019, I signed my first client within four days of launching my coaching business, which was amazing, right? And then I think it was maybe three months until I signed my second client. And then I went nine or maybe it was even 10 months without signing a client. And it wasn't because I decided to take a break from my business and I wasn't, you know, doing the work and showing up and making offers. Maybe I could have been making more, but I went nine or maybe 10 months without signing a client. And I remember wanting to share this because, you know, I think sometimes in the online space and the coaching industry, you know, we see these testimonials and these results of, you know, I started my business and even for me, you know, I launched my coaching business and signed my first client within four days. But I also then, you know, went months without signing a client. But we can see these, you know, results and testimonials of, you know, it feels like this kind of overnight success, right? Of starting your business or, you know, having a period of time where, you know, maybe you weren't signing clients and then boom, all of a sudden, you know, this great success. So I remember really wanting to share that. And I remember that resonating with a lot of people, but also at the same time, again, feeling nervous to share that, but also knowing that, you know, transparency and in sharing that was really important to me. The second was, <laughs> this actually kind of surprised me. I remember the next day looking at, you know, opening up Instagram and seeing how many notifications I had, you know, not only just from the post in itself, but also DMs from people, you know, in reply of this post. But I posted that, I remember the title saying, I got a job. And this was after two years of building and running my business. And I remember really wanting to share this because, you know, I feel like there's this misconception of, you know, you start your business and then, you know, you're building that until that's your full-time thing. And then that's the thing that you do for the rest of your life, right? And I think it's not as conventional maybe to start a business, be running a business, but then go get another job and also maybe be working for somebody else while you're still building and running your business. And the third thing was, and I had thought about this 
I think once I had made around fifty to sixty thousand dollars in my business, I knew that when I crossed the hundred thousand dollar mark in my business, that I wanted to share how long it took me. Because again, I feel like in the online coaching space and even just, not even just coaching, but just in the online business world, if you will, there's a lot of talk about making $100,000 and you know seeing people make, and I have friends who made $100,000 in their first year in their business, which is amazing, but that wasn't my experience. And I knew that I wanted to share my experience and just kind of, you know, peel back the curtain on at least my experience and my journey in building my business. So one of the things that I shared was, I remember the post as well, it was to the coach who didn't make $100,000 in your first year in your business, I didn't either. And this was kind of just me, you know, raising my hand and saying, look, I wasn't one of those people who made $100,000 in my first year in my business. And I kept going, you know, I, I didn't make $100,000 in my business. I think I made around, oh gosh, maybe like 11 or $12,000 in my first year in my business, but I kept going and I still reached that elusive $100,000 making $100,000 in my business, but it took me a little bit longer than, you know, some people and that's okay too. So those were definitely the three things looking back that, you know, when I think about wanting to show up in the way that I did and being transparent, being as transparent as I could in my journey, those were the three things that really stood out to me. And now I feel like it's, time to and i feel like i want to share why i decided to take a break from my coaching business and why i ultimately have ended up quitting coaching so i shared that i started my coaching business in april 2019 and this april i relaunched my course, Becoming a Coach. So I actually launched Becoming a Coach last year. And then the beginning of this year, as I was taking students through it, I was also creating it at the same time. And then I had planned to relaunch it in April. And the intention was that I was going to have this kind of as a evergreen, if you will, like evergreen course where it was always going to be open for enrollment and I wanted to, you know, have people signing up, you know, every month, every day. <laughs> so I relaunched Becoming a Coach in April and I had zero people sign up. And again, in full transparency, knowing that this is something that I've wanted to share, it's taken me time as well to be able to share this. Not that I feel like I have, you know, any negative emotions around having zero people sign up. I actually really view it as, you know, a blessing in disguise because I think if I would have had people signing up and it going well, I don't think I ever would have realized that I needed to take a step back from my business and I needed to take a break from my business. I wouldn't even say that I was necessarily full blown burnt out from my business. I probably was, <laughs> but I also just knew that I kind of needed to just take a step back and kind of just look at the bigger picture of what I really wanted in life and where I wanted to go in the next year, in the next couple of years. And I don't think I ever would have came to that conclusion and had the courage to decide to take a break from my business if that didn't happen, if I didn't have, you know, zero people sign up for the course. And, you know, at the time I was devastated. I was devastated because I had spent all of these months 
creating this course, I poured so much of my time and energy and, you know, love into this course. And I really believed in it too. And, you know, I had people reaching out to me, asking me about the course and I had people on a wait list. Like I really felt like, you know, there was going to be at least a couple people <laughs> that were going to be signing up in the first couple of days or, you know, just signing up to the course and to have zero people sign up just felt like a stab in the heart. And I just remember being so devastated by it. But also then at the same time, you know, again, blessing in disguise, it was that catalyst and opportunity for me to kind of look at everything that I was doing in my business and honestly saying to myself, you know, this isn't working. So I decided to take a break from my business I didn't announce anything. I didn't say, you know, I was taking a break from my business. I had thought about it at times. I had thought about not so much posting and sharing it on social media, but I had thought of at least sending an email out to my list and, you know, the people there and sharing that I had decided to take a break and kind of share more in that space. But I didn't. I didn't announce it I didn't I didn't really share with anybody even those closest to me you know of course Dan knew and you know some of my family and friends knew as I was then you know making plans to go back home to the states but I just stopped posting I stopped sending out emails and I just stopped showing up in my Instagram stories and Again, this coincided with me deciding to go back home to the States instead of going back to Australia with Dan as we had planned. We actually had plans to, we had flights to go back to Australia after our time being in Bali. But with deciding to take a break from my business, I knew that if I wasn't, you know, focusing all my time and energy into my business, I knew that I, it was time to, and I, I wanted to go back to, you know, I wanted to work. And although I am able to work here in Australia, and I have, I, you know, I held a part-time job as I was building my business here in Australia, I knew that it would be a lot easier for me to go home and go back to work. And I thought of the country club where I used to work years ago, I thought about emailing my manager and I just knew that my old manager, I knew that if I emailed her and said, Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, back here in the States, like, are you looking for any, you know, staff for the summer? I knew that she would, and she was like so excited for me to be back and was, you know, open arms, ready to take me back. So, I knew that it was, and I, and I wanted that too. I wanted something, I wanted easy. I wanted to just be able to just, you know, go back home. Also to just see my friends and family again. I think, you know, in all my years traveling and living abroad and, you know, when things are hard and, you know, feeling so devastated after relaunching, becoming a coach and having zero people sign up. Like I just wanted to hold my friends and family again. And I just wanted to just be in the comforts of, of being home. So I decided to cancel my flight back to Australia. I booked, I ended up booking a one-way ticket back home to the States. And this was really hard. I mean, we were in Bali for a little over three months and we kind of, looking back, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot because we knew that we had two weddings in Bali. So we had a wedding the beginning of April and like the second week of May. And so originally we were just gonna go to Bali before the first wedding and then stay like a month or so and then be there for the second wedding and then come back. But we ended up deciding to go to Bali in February. And even before relaunching and becoming a coach and this happening, I feel like around March, Dan and I both, probably more so Dan, 
were kind of ready to leave Bali, but then it didn't make sense because, you know, we had a wedding in like three weeks. So it was like, well, we're not gonna fly back to Australia and then fly back here to Bali for the wedding. And then there isn't like our, the next wedding is like a couple weeks after that. So we stayed in Bali for the whole three months, maybe it was three and a half months. And the last couple of weeks especially were really hard because, you know, I relaunched Becoming a Coach. I had zero people sign up. I was really devastated. Um, also the decision to go back home to the States, that was really hard. Um, I cried, <laughs> I cried a lot. I think there was probably, you know, five days, almost a week where I was just crying every single day. I remember crying at dinner and the guy came over and like gave us extra napkins because he could just see that I was crying. I remember being at breakfast and just saying to Dan, like I just had to walk back to our place because I was just like, in tears. Like I didn't want, you know, being out in public and just like bawling your eyes out. Like you just want to be in your own space. So the last couple of weeks in Bali were really hard. They were, they were fun as well. We had friends come over for our sec the second wedding and Dan's brother and his wife came and you know we enjoyed spending that time with them and we we did have fun but it was also it was hard knowing as well that I was going to be going home to the states and you know I wasn't going to see Dan we weren't going to be together for a couple of months because we had my family had already planned a trip to Maui the end of August so I ended up going home after this the second wedding in like mid-May. So, you know, when we said goodbye at the airport, it was kind of like, you know, I'll see you after this trip to Maui. I was going to kind of use that trip to Maui as kind of then just my way of then getting back over here to Australia. So, you know, Seattle to Maui and then Maui back here to Australia. But that was also, you know, we knew that it would be more or less three months without seeing each other and you know now we've been together for five years and spending as much time as we had together in Bali and just you know in general it was hard thinking about not being together and not being together for all of that time but I also knew and, and Dan knew that this was the best decision for me to just go back home to the states to be with my family and friends to go back to work working at the country club and for him to come back here to australia and you know go back to work here even though it was hard i think we both realized then and probably more so now realized that that was the best decision for the both of us this around this time was also I think this was also in part what led to me deciding to take a break from my business was around this time was also my birthday. So I turned 29 in April this year and without kind of planning it this way, you know, when we went to Bali, we didn't really have so much of a plan of where we were going to be or what we were going to, what we were going to do. We ended up, I think we ended up staying in 10 or 11 like villas like places like we ended up moving around a lot even though it wasn't you know very far that we were traveling we just ended up hopping around to different places a lot during our time in bali which was also i think what led to just things it was just hard hard kind of just like picking ourselves up and moving ourselves to this new place and that feeling of not really feeling settled that was that was also really hard but Without planning it, we, around the time of my birthday, we were, in the last couple of weeks of Bali, we were staying in the same guest house that we stayed in four years ago as I was starting my coaching business, which just so happens to be the same guest house where I first stayed with Dan when we first met in 2018. So being in this guest house, I think brought up a lot of emotions because we had stayed there four years ago as I was, you know, in the very beginning stages of building my business. I think I was in between that first one and two clients that I had. And also, you know, 
emotions as well of this was the same guest house that Dan and I kind of first met in. But more so when it came to my business, you know, I remembered sitting outside in the little courtyard. I remember sitting at the table and I remember, you know, recording Instagram stories and, you know, showing up and doing all the things that I was still doing in my business, of course, and feeling like, although it had been four years, I had, I felt like not a lot had changed. And when I say that, I mean, you know, I had worked with, at that point, you know, over 30 clients. I had made, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars in my business, which was amazing. And I had helped so many people in my business, but I felt like for me personally, I felt very much in the same place. I felt like I was still, you know, and I feel like this is not something that is talked about as much, but I felt like I was still, you know, thinking about my business from the literally the moment that I would wake up in the morning until the moment I went to bed at night. Like it just, it consumed me. I constantly felt like, you know, this pressure to create content, to be posting, you know, five days a week, to be showing up my stories every single day, to, you know, showing up as the authority and, you know, telling people how they could work with me and, you know, figuring out what their problem was and reflecting it back to them in an even better way than they could have, you know, it was just so much. And, I just felt like, you know, thinking about turning 30 next year and thinking about, you know, the things that I just mentioned, you know, of feeling so consumed in my business. I just remember having this moment where I just, I just knew that I didn't want to be in that same place again next year when I would turn 30. I didn't want another year to go by where I looked back at my life and all the things that I was doing and would think, what was, what was I even doing? Like things were clearly not working. And again, I think that was a thing that even though it was hard for me to admit to myself that things were not working. Like I was signing clients, I was making money. I was obviously, I was making progress in my business year after year but something also wasn't working. Like when there was that, I had this feeling of kind of like this restriction of, you know, there were times of course in my business when things would flow and things felt easy, but also at the same time, it felt like I was pushing, you know, a cart up a hill, like things just felt heavy and hard. I think, you know, I just had to look at things and just be like, things aren't working, like things aren't working. And I, I just knew that it was time to take a break. So I did. And, you know, I've talked with a couple of my friends, some of my friends who are, who are or were coaches. And, you know, I've shared with them that I still think of myself as a great coach. I still love coaching. I look back on the last four years in building and running my coaching business and I do not regret a moment of it. I don't regret anything. I don't regret any of the investments that I've made, even though I spent thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars that I didn't even really have, put it on credit cards. <laughs> like I don't regret anything. You know, there and there was moments too where now that I've taken a break where I have looked back on the journey of building my business, running my business, where I thought I've thought to myself like that that was a moment where I again could have had that time to be like things aren't working, but I just kept going. And I think there's messaging out there where, you know, that's kind of what you do, you know, you things aren't working, but you know, you keep going, you know. And I think sometimes too, like, I think the best thing that we can do is sometimes not. <laughs> sometimes, 
you know, if things aren't working, we have to kind of look at, okay, well, why aren't things working, right? And do I want to keep going or do I want to take a step back and do I need a break? And for me, with relaunching my course, Becoming a Coach, again, blessing in disguise, it, that was my kind of moment where I just, you know, saw for myself for the first time really that things weren't working and I needed to take a step back and I needed a break. So when I first decided to take a break from my business, I didn't tell myself, oh, you know, I'm gonna take a three month break and then I'll come back to coaching at X date and, you know, month or whatever. I just kind of kept things open-ended. I knew that that's what I needed. I knew that I just needed to take a step back and take a break and just keep things open. I don't know what the future holds. As I said, I still think of myself as a great coach. I think that I am really good at coaching and I do love coaching, but again, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, get back into coaching. I don't know if I'm going to want to. I don't know if that's something that's a part of, you know, my future. I don't know. And I think that's okay too. I think it's okay to just keep things open. And if, you know, one of the things that I truly believe is if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, you know, if I'm meant to have and run a coaching business, then that's what's meant to be. And that is what will be. But I also know that, you know, it's okay to not know what the future holds. And I'm just really leaning into, I think this year, I've really just been leaning into what's meant to be will be. And also everything works out, you know, I'm, I no longer want to, I think this is also something I've, you know, come to realize and taking a step back from my business and taking a break from my business is feeling as if I have had such a tight grip on my business and and my goals you know the things that i wanted to create and do the goals that i had in my business like having such a tight grip on them where i almost just lost sight of everything else you know again that's like it just consumed me it was you know something that i thought about all the time the things that i wanted the things the goals that i had and I just knew that I just I just needed a, a, a break from it all and although it was an adjustment taking a step back and taking a break from my business you know when you go four years constantly every single day thinking about your business from morning to night to spending almost every day you know creating content writing emails showing up online to then one day not like it was such an adjustment, but it was also so nice. <laughs> it was so nice to just not be consumed in it all, to not, you know, go out for coffee and be thinking about how I could turn, you know, something that I thought about, you know, in the moments leading up to having my coffee, how I could turn that into, you know, a post. And then sometimes, you know, as I was drinking my coffee, like, starting to draft up a post like it was just it was just constant so it was an adjustment going from spending my days like that every single almost every single day for the last four years to to not but again i never realized how much i needed to take a step back and how much i needed a break from my business until until I did. And again, even though I was devastated in the, in the moment of having zero people sign up for my course, I also am so grateful that I didn't. <laughs> I'm so grateful that I didn't get the result that I wanted because it then led me to finally decide to take a break from my business. And 
I've kind of touched on it already, but one of the things that I didn't realize as much until I decided to take a break from my business was how much, and I will say, how much I let, you know, it was no, it was nobody else that put the pressure on me, you know, to sign clients and make money, like put on the pressure to constantly show up every single day, you know, creating content, all the things like it was nobody else but me, but I didn't realize how much I let my business consume me in the last four years. It did, like it consumed me in so many ways, like mentally, emotionally, just in all of the ways. And I didn't realize that as much until I decided to really take a break from the business. And I'm not just talking, you know, in the year before I was able to finally go home after two years, I got stuck here in Australia during COVID. And I wouldn't even say stuck here because I was living here at the time, but stuck meaning I couldn't, I actually just couldn't book a flight to go back home to the States for like two years. So I was finally able to go back home to the States, see my fam family and friends after two years. And I took a break, I guess, or I took time off really from my business for two weeks. So. When I first got back home, I took two weeks off and then I resumed coaching and you know working with all of my clients in the last three weeks of being home. And then we went home again in July and August of last year and I took two weeks off as well. So I had taken time off from my business, but I hadn't taken a break, like a full on break from my business like I did when I decided to take a break from my business earlier this year. And I'm, I, I knew that when I was leaving Bali, I knew that since I had decided to take a break from my business, I knew that it was time to go back to work. And I knew that it would be easier for me to go back home. I also, I also wanted that. I also wanted, as I've shared, I also wanted to spend time with my family and friends, but I just knew that it would be a lot easier for me to go back to work, back in the States, go back to the country club. I also just wanted something easy. Like I said, I can work here in Australia, but I knew that me coming back here, it would you know, maybe take a little bit of time until I found a job. I didn't know how long that was going to be. And I just wanted to, more or less like land and kind of like go back to work. And I knew that the country club was going to be that. And it, it was, you know, my manager was so happy for me to be, my old manager, she was so happy for me to be back. And I pretty much immediately went back to work. And, you know, I really just wanted a job where it was something that I just knew how to do. I've been, working as a server for over 10 years now. I don't know, I got my first job when I was 16, even though it was starting off as a dishwasher. But I think then, you know, around 17, 18, I started working as a server. So it's been like over 10 years off and on, you know, it's something that I just know naturally how to do so easily. And also I had worked at the country club before. So, you know, I knew the club, I knew the restaurant, I kind of knew how things worked, although things had, you know, changed a little bit, obviously, because it had been seven years since I worked there. But I also just wanted a job that I could clock in and clock out. And, you know, when you think about a job where you go and you just clock in and clock out, you're not really thinking about, like, you clock out and you're not really thinking about that job, right? Or what you just did that day. Maybe some, but I think it's a lot different when you are working for yourself and you have your own business. There really is no clocking in and clocking off. It's kind of like you're, in, at least in my experience, you know, you're kind of on it all the time. And I just, I wanted that. I wanted to just be able to go to work, do, do my work, clock in and clock out and not have to think about anything really, like not really have a lot of responsibilities. 
And also I wanted to go back to work and I wanted to have, you know, a, a job, something that was, you know, I was going to get paid every, every two weeks. You know, I think that's one of the things in working for yourself and having your own business. Yes, the, you know, the, you're uncapped in how much you can make, right? But also at the same time, there's the instability of you might have one really great month, but you might also have a not so great month, right? And then it's also on you to save for taxes and allocate money accordingly for your expenses and all of this kind of stuff. So, you know, in my business, although I had made, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars, it wasn't like I profited a hundred thousand dollars, right? I was, you know, investing in myself and in my business. There was, you know, business expenses as well. And not, I never really got to the place where I was consistently paying myself for my business every, you know, so often, let's say every two weeks. So I never really had that like stability from my business. I would pull for my business or pay myself for my business when I needed the money, but I wasn't getting paid from my business like I would, you know, working for somebody else. So I also just really wanted that. And I wanna share just some lessons that I've learned in taking a break from my business and, you know, going back to working as a server and working from, from someone else is working for yourself is not better than working for someone else. And alternatively, working for someone else isn't worse off than working for yourself, right? Like there is no, there is no competition to it. I remember, you know, about a year or two into my business and I remember my mom saying, both my parents have worked for the state of Washington, where I'm from. They have worked for the state of Washington since, like that, that's been their job for all, all these years, right? So they've done the Monday through Friday, nine to five kind of thing. And I remember my mom telling me, she said to me, she's like, I could never do what you do. Like I could never, and it's not even that she could never do it in itself, but she just doesn't want that for herself. She's like, I like, I, I like working Monday to Friday. I like, you know, I like my job. I like, you know, getting paid every two weeks. I. I just like the security of my job and the paycheck and, and just everything, right? And it was kind of in that moment where I realized, you know, working for yourself isn't for everybody and that's okay, right? Like working for someone else is okay as well. Like it's not, there's no better or, or worse. And I think also too that everything has its pros and cons, right? So working for yourself is going to have pros and cons to it. And also working for someone else is going to have its pros and cons to it. So there's, again, there's no, this is better than that or anything like that. It's figuring out what's going to work best for you. What do you want, right? What are you willing to take on? And also one of the things that I've thought about too is not everything is forever, you know? Again, I don't regret anything in the last couple of years in deciding to start my business and building my business in you know, continuing to build my business, you know, be in it for four years, even though there was definitely moments where I could have stepped back and been like, okay, actually things aren't working. Like maybe I should, you know, get another job or, you know, take a break or whatever, but like nothing is forever. Right. And I knew, I knew that as, as well going into going back to working as a server and going back to working at the country club, I knew that that wasn't going to be a forever thing for me, but I also knew that that was exactly what I needed at that time. And I also knew that, you know, when I first wanted to start my coaching business and I wanted to first start working for myself, I knew that that's what I wanted, right? And I don't regret deciding to do that and all the things that, that came with it. Like I, I look back on that moment and I just think I'm so proud of myself for deciding to, to do that for myself, right? Knowing that that's something that I really, really wanted. I really wanted to 
you know, work online and work for myself and then, you know, start a coaching business. Like I really wanted that, even though it may not have ultimately led me to where I wanted it to lead me or where I wanted it to go. Again, like everything, everything happens for a reason. Something else I've thought about is, you know, as I went for, as I went from working for myself and running my own business to then working as a server and working for someone else is, <laughs> how do I say this? No one cares. <laughs> I remember thinking as, you know, I first got, I, let me, let me explain what I mean by that. I remember when I first got back to the country club and again, I had worked at this country club seven years ago and there were a couple people that remembered me from, you know, or they would be like, you have a very familiar face. And I would say, you know, oh yeah, I used to work here seven years ago. And, you know, then I would start to talk to some of the members as they were having, you know, their food or drinks as I was standing at their table, having a conversation with them. And I, you know, would, would share with them. Yeah. You know, I've been, um, living in Australia, you know, I'm, I'm from here, but you know, I've been living in Australia. I've been, you know, running a coaching business for the last couple of years. And in that kind of like split second, I would oftentimes catch myself thinking like, oh, I wonder what they think of me sharing that I had been running a coaching business, working for myself for the last four years. And now they see me wearing an apron, standing at their table, working as a server. But also at the same time, just remembering that like no one cares, right? Like maybe for a split second, maybe somebody would have thought that it just, like actually I just it doesn't really matter right like it it would have it would have just been like a blip in their thought process and it really doesn't matter right like I and in that moment I was just able to just drop all of the like shame that I maybe would have had for going back to working as a server and <laughs> working at the country club after spending the last four years building and running my own business. So that's why I decided to take a break from my business, why I quit coaching and all the things that I've kind of learned along the last couple of months in taking a break from my business, no longer, you know, spending all of my days consumed with my business, creating content, showing up, so I hope you enjoyed getting to hear this open and honest truth to why I decided to take a break from my business and why I quit coaching. So if you liked this video, please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button on this. I would really, really appreciate it. I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in this world and I will see you in the next video.